Hi, um, my presentation is like the opposite of Bill's, where I try to put everything on the slide. So <laughs> I'm sorry that <laughs> um, I'm just going to jump at, straight in, and I hope that I can summarize my ideas briefly enough, yet still with enough substance to give us a constructive uh, starting point for meaningful discussion. And in distilling my argument um, down, I've had to make a lot of generalizing statements, the mo most blatant of which I've marked with uh, asterisks. I do not claim that there are no exceptions. I'm certainly not the first to put forward aspects of this argument. Uh, what I'm hoping to do, however, is to draw everything together into a workable model of practice that is not grounded in the discipline's norm normative crisis mode of operation, so normative salvage mode. Uh, this is my first attempt then at, at articulating an, an enchantment model for archaeology. I would like to put forward to you a series of cases that underlie my argument for the enchantment of the archaeological record. Case one, archaeology has inherent in it sources of enchantment. Archaeologists, but in fact everyone everywhere, are literally atop untold histories all of the time. Histories that we've never seen before, that we may know nothing of, and that can thus surprise us and transform us in interminable ways. The very nature of archaeology as a subject that's open to interpretation as new techniques and voices and intellectual frameworks, etc., are introduced, furthers this facility for surprise and transformation. Case two, yet the typical methods we use as professionals uh, tend to revolve around a crisis model driven by the sector's normative preservation paradigm and conservation ethos. This model erroneously gui guises archaeology as a non-renewable resource, presuming there is some version of the past that can be saved in perpetuity. Case three, such endangerment narratives uh, are not only debilitating for archaeologists themselves, but they have little to no appeal to wider audiences. The crisis model blinds us and broader publics to new futures and different interpretations. It fetishizes authenticity, leading to cynicism, false consciousness, and nihilism in the face of its inevitable futility. It betrays profound weaknesses in professional interpretative aptitude and begs for a new moral model, quote unquote, for the discipline. My proposal is that archaeologists have the capacity to enchant the world at large, and we can do this via the wondrous affordances of the heritage record itself, teased out through, number one, fundamental changes to our primary recording systems and our higher order interpretations that are grounded in affective methodological practices. Number two, facilitated agonistic dialogue, building on the thinking of Chantal Mouffe and Nicole Dufel. And three, cultivating both craft skills and creativity to make these previous two points <laughs> realizable amongst both archeologists and their audiences. I'd like to suggest that in the context of archeology span and heritage, Enchantment is generated by what I will loosely call emotive engagement. I defer to the definition of emotion and affect and feeling used by Wetherell et al. 2017, and I call attention to their assertion that, quote, emotion is action-oriented. It pushes people to do things. As I interpret this, emotion is enacted in the body. It propels the body forward to act in some fashion. Enchantment, then, can spur change in the world. What is crucial for my argument is that everyone has the aptitude to be inspired, to feel, to be emotively engaged. Moreover, this it can be deliberately fostered, even with people who might otherwise be resistant. Dozens of tested conceptual and methodological frameworks for this emotive fostering exist. Yes, some of them are flawed. Many mistakenly <laughs> assume emotion should only lead to positive, affective outcomes. And indeed, most emotion assessment tools are actually embedded with this positivity bias. Nevertheless, <laughs> there is a huge body of evidence that indicates that emotive engagement leads to very powerful effects, including remembrance, attachment, restoration, learning, care, and resistance to hegemony leading to socio-economic political change. 
Furthermore, the scholarship shows that people generally want to explore complex and controversial topics in cultural heritage contexts, and major research endeavors across multiple continents demonstrate that uh, people do not, do not expect cultural institutions to be neutral, but rather, quote, to have a social responsibility to take a leading role in inspiring people's social and political activism in order to help bring about change, end quote from Lynch, Bernadette Lynch. However, the evidence also suggests that professionals often wrongly judge their audiences, underestimating their capacity to respond, to debate, to be challenged. This is arguably the greatest problem we face as professionals, because to fulfill our social responsibility for inspiring activism, we need to invest in fundamental structural change. Yet only a minority of professional bodies are really prepared to accept the risks of such change and where participatory or inclusive models of practice have become standard, the majority do actually follow a quote unquote charity model, which hasn't really changed institutional structures nor afforded true social justice or radical trust because these institutions don't actually have the means to deal with agonism or the frictions that come with true democratic debate. So there are many different ways um, that I and others have been trying to tackle um, these issues with primary fieldwork teams uh, in commercial archaeology contexts and in research contexts. And I wanted to just uh, end by attending to one, um, the EU-funded emotive project where we've been enrolling digital media in explorations of how affective engagement with heritage might produce care, social conscience, and civic welfare. I'm not naive to the many problems of the digital, and I really don't suggest that we must necessarily deploy digital technologies to achieve emotive impact. But the digital does offer many means to subvert expectations, and so can create the perfect condition to foster uh, enchantment or to further enchantment. And in emotive, we've been experimenting with this kind of subversion in various settings with different enchantment objectives uh, in mind. What our experiments have exposed is precisely those structural barriers that make pursuing activist goals in heritage almost impossible. So uh, in one case, uh, and you can, I've just taken a, a tiny excerpt uh, above, <laughs> where we've been developing a model for facilitated agonistic dialogue, the seeming irreconcilability of professional views with those of wider publics is captured in the polar opposite responses that we received to a dialogue around mental health. Most of our users demonstrated the affect in, in, affect of engagement that we had, had hoped for. So one says, um, you don't expect on a tour to get this level of depth with strangers or even with your family. That's fantastic. That experience would stick with you for a pretty long time. Whereas the institutional response portrayed the risk aversion that sabotages most activist participatory projects in this case, this person said it could be quite damaging to people. And then they go on to list all the many possible ways. From a mental health perspective, also it'll destroy their political perspectives. Also, it might get physical when they start getting passionate about it. <laughs> so <laughs> there, obviously there's so much to say here, but I'm going to end <laughs> uh, by stating that I think enchantment needs to be fostered, not just amongst wide public audiences, but most urgently amongst archaeologists and heritage professionals themselves. I believe our professional practices regularly breed disempowerment, stagnation, and actually a complete misconceptualization of the heritage record, and this doesn't need to happen. Flipping our model around through an enchantment-led approach can, I think, expose archaeology for what it truly is, an infinitely inspiring resource with a capacity to create a better uh, world now and in the future. Thank you for listening to me.